be understated. Across the globe, there are still many communities that do not have access to clean water. According to the United Nations, around 2.2 billion people across the globe lack access to clean drinking water and instead are forced to rely on contaminated water supplies. The scarcity of water in areas will also displace 700,000 people by 2030 if no action is taken to tackle this issue. Contaminated water poses many risks, especially for small communities. The journey to retrieve potentially dirty water can be dangerous with journeys being several miles in distance. The use of contaminated water results in the spread of diseases such as cholera, dysentery and diarrhoea. Calsa Aid's Water for Africa project aims to bring clean drinking water to the remote rural communities of Africa. Our coordinators and volunteers work with local communities. Get the water right there, son, man. All you got to do is dig and find it, man. Yeah, but we, hey, we ain't mathematical, man. We ain't engineering. We ain't doing that. If we was doing all that shit, we would have been did it. That's the thing. That's why it confuses me. If we are so smart, we invented this. We did everything in the world. Pyramids, all this crazy shit. Why, why, why are we still fucked up? That, that's confusing, man. Shit. Them niggas been living over there forever, and the fucking Patel came over there, dug a hole, and the water just flowed up. Like- <laughs> <laughs> Patel, Patel was like, oh, y'all, y'all starving? Let's give me a shovel. God damn. <laughs> and these niggas ain't know that they've been over there a million years. They ain't know that. Right there. The water right there, man. As above, <laughs> what they say in the Bible, as is above, below, whatever they say. Godly. Yeah, man, Shit. the water right there, man. All you gotta do is dig a fucking hole, man. <laughs> man. Man, these motherfuckers, man. Um shout out to um James J, man. Um coming through once again, man. Shout out to you, man. It's crazy, man. That Patel was like, man, just give me a fucking shovel. Here he <laughs> Calsa Aid's Water for Africa project aims to bring clean drinking water to the remote rural communities of Africa. Our coordinators and volunteers work with local communities to establish where clean water is needed the most. We work with local businesses and contractors to drill and build water pumps to provide clean water to rural communities. This project has been progressing for two decades now, with thousands benefiting from clean water. Thank you, Mr. Patel. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Patel, for teaching us how to fucking um the the, the water is right there. You know, where, yeah. right where you is, the water is water right there. It's right there. <laughs> yeah. gotta... <laughs> like, and it's you know. like we it's and like I don't know, something must be I, I'm not even joking around, I'm not trying to be a dick, but I feel like something's wrong with us. Cause if he just came and he just did that, like, like you said, he just came. We've been fucking him all this time. He just came and just took a shovel and with a few people and they just did that right there. Like, why did we do this? Like, fucking hundred years ago, two hundred. Oh man, this the is wisdom. Crazy. They always talk about the wisdom, ancient wisdom, <laughs> and shit. What ancient wisdom? You don't know the fucking waters right there. It's right there. <laughs> These motherfuckers, kids. Are, I mean, people are dying. Like they got people like starving to death and shit, and the water is literally right there. All the water you need for your crops, all the water you need for your fucking grow bananas, whatever the fuck y'all growing over there. Is <laughs> I guarantee. Right there. I guarantee with that Patel, that little area right there. I can guarantee you, if he stays there right there and they, they 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 stay around for a little bit, that area starts becoming green. They start growing yep. shit around there. I can guarantee it. Yep, I guarantee you, and I guarantee you the second he leave, it's if time. he leave two months later, that shit going to be like <laughs> gonna, they fix it. I bet you they don't even ask him. It's going to be all dried up again. <laughs> teach us how to fix this thing. If you, before you leave, man, teach us how to fix this thing just in case it break. They're going to have to call his ass back. Man. <laughs> God. In 2019 and 2020 alone, we have managed to establish over 30 water pumps in multiple areas across Gambia and Malawi. Clean water access reduces the spread of preventable disease, increases safety in healthcare settings, and increases collective safety as no longer will long journeys have to be made for water. 
Kelsa aid will continue. Yeah, they walking a fucking hundred miles to the river. And the women do that shit over there. And I was like, some man, he chilling, man. He in here chilling, swatting flies. He made the woman go down there to fucking do that shit, man. I'm carrying, they be carrying these big ass tubs, like these big ass burrows on their heads and shit. On their fucking head and shit, man. Way bigger than this shit. Like the burrows that. I don't know what the fuck them barrels they like blue, whatever the fuck them yeah, barrels. the barrels you send back to the islands and shit. Yeah, yeah, I know you're yeah, talking about full of water. You know how heavy water is on their fucking head. I don't even know how the fuck they get it on their head. Like how the fuck you get <laughs> that big ass barrel on your fucking head? Let alone fucking fucking walk it back fucking 50 miles to the fucking village and shit. That shit. Cool. Meanwhile, the water. Meanwhile, the water was right underneath them the whole meanwhile, time. Meanwhile, the water was right underneath their feet, and the fucking vendors of math, math and fractions <laughs> and shit, they fucking never knew it. Increases collective safety as no longer will long journeys have to be made for water. Calsa Aid will continue to work across the African continent to provide clean water for more communities in the future. Thank you for the continued support. Man, I mean, listen, man. Um, I just... They're they, they speechless, man. You know what I'm saying? Sons leave speechless. None of that shit would be there if um, the white man didn't colonize that shit. Unfortunately, in many countries around the world, it is not easy when it comes to accessing fresh, clean, drinkable water. Look at that, man. A white man built that shit and left. And look at it now, just niggas. <laughs> it's like that. A lot of like in Africa is like that. Jails, build it. It's like oh, a lot of shit's like that. It's just, it ruins and shit. Yeah, it's just, it's just, just no, um, what do you call it? Um, maintenance. They don't know how to maintain. No that. maintenance, no restoration, nothing. Yeah, Long walks across villages and difficult terrain is usually required to get access to this precious life source. Pictures like these are very unfortunate. However, in many countries, they are part of day-to-day -day life. One of these countries being Benin, one of the most poverty-stricken countries in Even the world. The white people. Overall, only around 65% of the Beninese population has access to safe drinking water. For the most part, the population lives in urban areas, but in remote locations, aid is urgently needed. Before work commences, prayers are observed, and with God's help, challenges are faced head on. Look at the roads. They don't have no paved roads. They they got cars. It'd be one thing if you they come in off. They come in off. They come in. Paved roads. That's the basics. Like we take that for granted here in America. Like they, even if you go to the country, you go visit your country, your family in the country. They got paved roads. Yeah, eventually you see some kind of road. It ain't nowhere where there's no asphalt. Or concrete, man. Well, it's parts of Africa where the eight um Chinese um like bought out and shit, and they built up, built like like roads and shit around it. But I hear what you're saying. Everywhere else is just like this. Yeah, the Chinese had to come, and and and, and that's and still like think about it. When when that shit starts getting potholes and shit, they gonna have to have the Chinese fix that shit. Yeah, we ain't fixing that shit. team from humanity Think about this, man. <laughs> these people can't even bring you your free stuff that you ain't built the road at least yeah. build a road so they can bring you your free stuff nah fuck that we don't work hard for everything you have to cross all this shit and walk miles and meet up and <laughs> the math the math magician mathematicians whatever the fuck algebra whatever the fuck, professionals i don't even know what the Everything the first people, yeah, these are the first people. Um, the, the first civilizations, man. 
first and last. A team from Humanity First has set itself the mission of providing clean water to the people. People who urgently need it. There is a lot of excitement, especially since there are two projects. Hell yeah, it's excitement. If I was a little kid and these motherfucking white men came, I'd be happy as shit. Real shit. Food? Water? Nigga. Fresh water. You get a glass of fucking water, man. And then I had to worry about having diarrhea and shit after they drink that shit. Yeah. A lot of water's bad down there like that. Yo, I, I bet these people worship white people. Because they little kids, they probably look at their, their their people. And then when the white man come, it's, it, it will be hard. Press one. It will be hard for these kids to not worship white people. Real shit. Or pickles. Real shit. And you know what's crazy? Kid. You know what's crazy? That's been going on for years. Remember when we was, um, when we was younger and we had those commercials like in Africa, the, um, the, the kids that were starving and shit. There's always gliders that was always down there. Those rescue missions and all that you just feeding them. <laughs> yeah. So I can understand what you're saying. Like, imagine you seeing the glider come in and, and you see the glider before, like a, two or one months ago, three months ago, and you see another glider. It's like, oh my God, we're about to get some free food. We're about to eat. What? Everything yeah, about to get better. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, shit about shit. to just get better. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, think about it, man. The little fucking kids in that village. That, that fucking Battelle dug a hole and water just started spouting out. They was probably like, oh, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> oh, these motherfuckers is gods. They amazing. They magical. Yeah, he's a god in country, man. Real shit. Shit, man. Look at this. Look at these faces, man. I, I feel bad for these kids. These kids, these kids, man, they see that white man. They like, yo, you are, you are. They they probably don't even think this white man is the same species. I bet you they don't think racism. <laughs> Hell no. Hell's no. <laughs> Hell's no. Tell them races a construct. <laughs> yeah, cause, cause, like like you said a little while ago, they probably looking at their own people like, what the fuck? And this dude had to come and help. Like, nah, man. And, and, and they just come and, they, and and it's not like they bring the shit. That motherfucker dug a hole. It's almost like magic. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and that's gonna help them down the line, generations and generations to come. We need it. There is a lot of excitement, especially since there are two projects in this effort that have never happened in this form. The Humanity First and IAAAE team are interested in implementing a pilot project together today. A solar powered variant for water pump is to be tried out here. This is the first of five solar pumps planned for trial. Currently, the inhabitants of the village of Z have to travel long distances to obtain water. Access to the water in the wider area belongs to either individuals or owners of small businesses who sell clean water as a secondary source of income. The use of our water point will be free for the residents of Z, as well as for all neighboring villages. As work progresses, part of the team remains overnight. The other part travels back to start preparations to install a hand pump in another remote village. Our next destination is a village on the riverside, approximately one hour. A village on the river, and these motherfuckers still don't have no. On the river, no, on the fuck. You know what's crazy too. You know, the crazy thing is um, what the guy just said. I was I was gonna bring that up earlier when he said um some of the business owners like the water was running through like their property and shit. Yeah. I was gonna say that earlier like even if like we got a system going with the water, the Sun Man somehow will figure out how to extort that situation. Yeah, yep. you feel me? Oh yeah, definitely. They not a community. You talk about community. Them motherfuckers gonna gouge them poor people. They they gonna take everything them poor people got for some for, for some clean water. They ain't gonna give them people no aid. Some sun man ain't gonna give no niggas no aid. Look how green this shit is. This shit, <laughs> you can tell how fertile, like the, the river is right there. So it's fertile. And these motherfuckers need white people to come help them with some shit. Capital. Think about if gliders would have, think about if it would have been reversed. If we would have been in the cold part with all the places <laughs> and shit and the mountains. <laughs> And they would have been down here with this. We all died. 
<laughs> we probably would have died. Yeah, it would have been. It would, it would, it, it, thank God. God is good because he was like, look, man, we got. I got to get these motherfuckers. You know, like he didn't even put us <laughs> on the, the desert with the sand, man. The sand, man, got the desert. Sand, man, got the fucking worst. He got the worst shit. He just live on a desert. Yeah. Man, at least we got motherfucking this Water shit. shit. Yeah. The best. Rivers we got the best land on the fucking planet. And so it's like we didn't have to like at least it since we since we can't we're not capable of a lot the shit just like and we still were starving like these motherfuckers are still starving right here that's crazy they're starving here the main livelihood of the people here is fishing due to inadequate infrastructure this village is not accessible by ground. On the way to the village, unpaved roads have to be negotiated. This, you, this is this see. Is you're right. right. You're right. See the unpaved roads and all this. It's like, oh, that's crazy. They Go can't ahead, even bring you your free stuff. That is crazy. These people, you, you can't. You ain't even helping. Help them bring you free shit. Infrastructure. This village is not accessible by ground. On the way to the village, unpaved roads have to be negotiated, partly through wooded areas, which are not possible to be driven through. Many makeshift bamboo bridges make it difficult to bring heavy equipment to the village. And finally, at the last hurdle, a river must be traversed by wooden rowboats. It soon becomes apparent that the construction of a well in this village is not an easy task. However, something urgent needs to be done as people here are using marshy, contaminated water. They drink the same water that they wash their clothes in and they probably shit in there too. Yeah, and piss. And you know what you said? Like you said, makeshift bridges and like we don't build shit. Like <laughs> this motherfucker said makeshift bridge like shit that like is not gonna last. It's gonna like a few people going over the bridge is gonna fall apart. Like, make <laughs> shit like this is crazy. Man, shit, man, this shit ain't made by no regulation. Like, it's no standard. Like, so like here when you build a bridge, there's certain regulations, and and, and you gotta do a certain. You gotta be a certain bare, a certain amount of yeah, weight. The state has to come through be, and check all that shit out. Yeah, a certain amount of fucking materials and. Over there, man, that bridge, them bridges, every they no two bridges alike. <laughs> yeah, the people built that. The people themselves right there built them shits. It wasn't like the state came in and they regulated like, nah, y'all can't pass this. This ain't getting passed. They just built it and that was it, man. Salute the juice crew cut, man. He says gliders are the, to the extreme in their do-gooder approach to others, particularly sons. Could you imagine how hard they would go in the opposite direction? Should that switch ever flip? Um, yeah, I mean, it, we wouldn't help y'all like that, man. I ain't gonna lie, man. If it was she was on over foot, I hate to burst your bubble, man. We ain't it'll be a few, it'll be a few of us that would do it, but as a collective, Fox, no, what exactly, man? Yeah, I mean, Fox definitely, no. like, yeah, definitely, you have some people. It, it wouldn't be part of like we wouldn't be sending out billions of dollars and shit. Like, I mean, for nothing too. Like, here's the thing. As soon as you gave us your ass to kiss, whatever little thousands we yeah. were sitting up, that shit would cut off quick. Yeah. See, you can give Gladys your ass to kiss and they're gonna keep sending you fucking aid. You know, you can complain about it, man. Yeah, it, aid. even disrespecting them, you can disrespect them and you still yeah. gonna get aid. Yeah, that's the difference with us. If we were sending you some shit the first time you pops it, and I'm not talking about the second or the third, the first time you said something slick or somebody in your tribe said something slick, man, you'll be cut the fuck yeah. off. And we'll be cussing you ass out. Like, y'all lucky y'all getting this shit in the first place, motherfucker. Fuck Hell you. Hell yeah, man. Um... Salute to Deluxe 247, a.k.a. Cal Ripken, a.k.a. the real MVP, coming through once again, man. Um, the next water point is simply not possible for a daily walk of more than 13 kilometers under difficult conditions. These women got to walk 
13 kilometers every day to go get that fucking water. Kilometers under difficult conditions. Work begins and the conditions. villagers are providing assistance. The village is underwater during several months of the year. This is why the house. The village is underwater for several months of the year. And they're starving. Yes. <laughs> Work begins and the villagers are providing assistance. The village is underwater during several months of the year. This is why the houses are built in stilts. Our hand pump also needs to be constructed higher. Thus, a platform with the staircase is required, which can be scaled in drought conditions and is above the waterline in high tide conditions. In spite of the many obstacles, with God's help, our team is able to carry out this challenge. God's help is y'all doing it, white man. Don't we give God the credit, man. God, y'all yeah. doing that shit, white people. And you know, you know, it's one thing I noticed about black people. I guess one thing I could truly say that we invented. The only thing I ever see us doing, like to this day online, everywhere, is music and dancing. That's the only thing. That's the only thing I can see. Them dudes right there singing. That's the only thing I can say black people did, because that's the only thing I see right now to this day. Singing and dancing. Well, what's up, Fabian? Hey, well, hold on. Fabian's outside, man. You can hear crickets and shit. Hey, what's up? Yeah, man. Um, what do you think about this, man? Um the the the, the state like of Africa juxtaposed with the that we invented math, math, all math, and we invented all that shit. Yet, this is what's going on over there in Africa, man. Or what are your thoughts on anything, man? What are your oh thoughts? Oh my god, on this I don't even, dude. I don't even know where to begin, man. It's crazy. It's. It, I don't even know where to enter into it. It's. It's so bizarre. There's so many layers of it. It's like because it's the reality of it is weird enough. Just like mm -hmm. how how the different organisms kind of interact with each other and, you know, how gliders manage to project their, like this dude thinks that the people that he's dealing with here are the same kind of organism as him, regardless really of the fact. Think, on, do you really think he thinks that uh, when he goes to sleep at night, when it's just him and his pillow, or you think he just says that publicly? I think it's neither really. I think what happens is that what actually is taking up the space in his mind about it is the fulfillment of his reef, natural reflex to be helpful. And so whatever kind of narrative he has to kind of make use to make sense out of that, he just pastes it on there. It doesn't have to, he's, he's not sitting there really meditating and think, I mean, he, the one, some people might be, but in general, people like this. They don't sit around and really meditate and objectively calculate and really think it, make it logical. They don't have to. They just have to feel like I'm being, this is a way for me to be a good person and these are other people and they need help and they don't have this and they don't have that. They don't have to spend any time really thinking about, wait, like how does this, how does, how is this even real? Like how, you know? Okay. So tell me this. How does, how does he blame himself for this? Like how can a glider coming to this remote village where these people haven't built navigable roads to get free shit. Everyone wants to give them free shit. You would think that they would say, okay, everyone's bringing us free shit for the last 50, 60 years or whatever. Let's help them get the free shit here by making a no. road. I don't think they're living like that. I think the you know, it's that they're evolved to expect shit to come. And so if if this is the shit that's coming, they're just like, okay, there's that. If what comes is like somebody bashes them over the head, then it's like, okay, there's that. Waterline in high tide conditions. Yeah. 
In spite of the many obstacles, with God's help, our team is able to carry out this challenge. An isolated village with very little interaction with development finally gets access to clean water for the first time. There is immense joy and gratitude. And listen, man, what do you think about what I said? That these people, I think that these kids don't think they're the same organism. I think they know when they go to sleep, but no, I think when they walk around, they like, yo, these motherfuckers are different. That's a different being, yeah, for sure. Like, they don't have no problem. I don't even think these people would have any problem. No, they don't have any trouble with that. No, they don't have a problem with that. Yeah, because it's like this the the water, like our parents and our grandparents, they raised us here. We've been here forever. We've been starving and struggling. The water gives us diarrhea. And boom, these people showed up, dug a hole, and now we got fucking water that you can see through. Gods. <laughs> like you have to think that they were gods, man. <laughs> right? But and but also it's like it's that, but it's also par for the course because when you're kind of living in the moment and the world just presents to you whatever it presents to you, some weird creature coming over with some weird invention that now you know changes your life in some way or some other way, it's just like part of the flow of the, you know. You don't think there's that a deep eternal mentality. You don't think there's a deep these kids don't deeply appreciate this. Yeah, I think you could say that they appreciate it. But like if they let's say like some of these kids started running around on the periphery of their like land, their space where they usually hang out, and they found like a tree that was like a fruit tree. Maybe they have like one or two in the village or something, but they found one that's like huge and that's full of fruit and it's there year round and they start climbing it and just eating and they just feel great. It's like, you know, ex the best fruit ever. And it's just like that. You could say that they appreciate that, but they wouldn't, it, it, it would just be part of the flow of their experience of life on the planet where they're at. They're not like making abstract calculations about, they're not like falling into a state of philosophical musing because they encountered something like that. You know what I'm saying? They're yeah, not going to take, they're not going to plant new other trees. They're not going to take the seeds from that tree and plant other ones. That's all I'm about to say. I'm about to say that. Because that wood is going a long way. And right. No, they, no, exactly. Probably not. They're not like taking these experiences and, and then plugging them into a stream of like calculation that has to do with, okay, how can I, how can I maximize my, my, my relationship with this experience into the future? No, it's just like, okay, here's this. Cool. You could call that appreciation. Yeah, because my thing would be like, if that glider made one of these things, I'd be like, yo, glider, tell me how to make this shit so, you know what I'm saying, we can make mm. 10 of them. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want one for myself just in my house. <laughs> like, you see, like, they would just be satisfied sharing it's this like, one. Family. It's like if you give a kid, if you give, like, a three-year-old an ice cream cone, he doesn't sit down and start to, like, you know, retroactively construct Let's see, how could I create more of this? Or so, you know, he's just like, oh, cool, ice cream tastes good, you know. Development mm. finally gets access to clean water for the first time. There is immense joy and gratitude. Mm. Our team leaves the village comforted with smiling faces. Wow. That, I mean, the most concerned grown up in that group who sees that and is like, if, if some grown up in that village is like, this is amazing. I want to keep this experience available for my kids and for my village or whatever. He does. I mean, how, what kind of mentality does he have available to apply to the execution of that desire? Like his the his the mental world that he's living in is so different from the one that produced the machines and the you know the lubricants and the metals and the all the filaments and the shipping and all that shit. You know what I'm saying? 
Yeah, that's what we're talking no, about, man. I, I, I completely get that, man. Um, I completely get that. But still, like, now, like, the gliders are leaving. So it's like, they're like, hey, man, we're going to leave in a few days. It's like, hey, uh, man, um, we got to leave. Um, you not telling me how he did that. <laughs> You know yeah, I don't think we on, on, on some real shit. I don't even think we took that far. Like, I don't think so. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, at the at the utmost, maybe there's one guy who does think that far. But even if they did, what's he going to do with that thought? What if they give him a blueprint? The fuck is nah, he going to do? Like, no, nah, I, 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 I'm behind. I'm, I'm, I'm with you with that because it, I be seeing like little dudes from Africa that be inventing things, and I be thinking in my mind like, okay, that's that one guy. Like, nobody's behind him or backing him. No, everybody I mean, else is just standing around in awe. Yeah. Nah, yeah, I'm back you on that. Wow, man. Um, but the thing is, like, even, I mean, you you see what happens to Western infrastructure when it's just left, you know, with no gliders around. It just falls to pieces eventually. They just, and they just revert. This is this, this is the momentum of a however many tens of thousands of years old steady state situation. Yeah. Rugi Sinet here. We are in a whole village of Tanzania and greeted as heroes. Because this village has no drinking water, babies keep dying, and I'm here to say no to this. About There's no drinking water. They're supposed to die. He said we're heroes. He said we're heroes. Babies keep dying. That, that's the part that, that trips me up. Like these people have such a bandwidth for tragedy and despair that is I don't think any other group has that bandwidth, man, because it's 2023, man. Uh, these people, India used to be like that. Yeah, I, I'm sure India, yeah. But see, then, well, India, they, they still have a, such a large population. They multiply. These Africans don't multiply as fast as the Indians. Their birth, um, their birth rate is much lower than the Indians, man. Um but it's just it's just bizarre man that like 2023 people are still dying of of babies are dying of, of not having water famine and starvation right and, but, and this, the thing is like this dude this guy and people like him they their whole the whole history of their evolution is around what's called you know k strategic uh, reproductive strategy where they have few offspring and they really closely care about them and optimize their upbringing and their development. And if your baby dies, it's a big tragedy. And it's a tragedy for them as well because they're wired to be very sensitive socially because they need to cooperate very meticulously in order to survive winters and all that. These people in Africa, it's just like, it's a completely different strategy for reproduction. They reproduce, they spray and pray, they let the kids run around, they get, you know, and then a bunch of them live, a bunch of them die. It's like if you have a tree, a, a, a deciduous tree, if leaves never fall and you keep getting new ones every year, you're going to have a problem. This is just how nature works. This dude says, well, babies are dying and it's a problem, we're going to fix it. He just thinks it's, it's normal to feel a sense of extreme injustice or tragedy or something when baby it's like babies fucking die yeah like, and also you're a different organism also these people may maybe their evolution because they don't produce efficient like water like in 2023 so imagine 1533 imagine what what the water situation was like in 15 um 23 so it's like so they don't produce um food and, and nourishment at a rate that would support a huge population right no and so they maybe, never had a huge population until they started getting showered with free shit from the west right so the, the, so tell, quick, quickly tell them about that because I, I i i was shocked when i learned that that most of these african tribes pre-colonialization were um were um were, were very small you know what i'm saying like they weren't like five thousand ten thousand people it wasn't like 
millions of people and everything. It wasn't no, no. no Legos. There wasn't no Legos. Right. Yeah, it was like small, it was like small right. little tribes and shit. Right. They remain well within the carrying capacity of the available resources in the environment. And like all of the dangers and all the infant mortality and whatever predators and also just mass slaughter, just gleeful mass fucking slaughter. If you're a witch, if you're an albino, if you're a thief, if you are from a neighboring tribe, if the if the Kabaka gets syphilis and the witch doctor tells him, oh, you got to go kill a bunch of villagers in order to please the gods because they you know, you got syphilis again from one of your 700 wives. So the gods are angry, so you need to please them by going and slaughtering a bunch of villagers. They do it with glee. When the right. when the when the Europeans would come around with their guns, they would test them by going out and shooting someone. Yeah. And the dude would come back with a smile on his face and said, Damn, it works. Look at how some people are in America and their attitude about death and risk. Mm. It's just, it, you know, they're, they're different organisms, different reproductive strategies, and that means different psychologies, different attitudes about, tra I mean, you say like tragedy and despair. I don't think they're in despair about it. I mean, you've, you shed tears if somebody dies and stuff like that, but it's a different psychology. This glider right here, his entire life, if he had a child who died, his life would be devastated as fuck. A lot of these people in Africa, how many fucking kids is a what they start fucking at 12? If this guy had a stock, if he invested his money in the stock and he found out it was a Ponzi scheme, he would kill himself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a totally there's a totally different threat sensitivity <laughs> threshold for, for tragedy. Yeah, he would he would kill himself if 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 if, if he found out if, if that, that he he lost his fucking life savings or I mean that's what sun people in America are famous for. They're thick skinned, shit rolls off them. You know, that's the whole it's like it's not a secret. Yeah. But eight hundred children die every day in Africa from dehydration, diseases such as dysentery caused by the consumption of contaminated water and poor hygiene. These class belong to the people who have lost their relatives due to these reasons. In this village, where the population is 2,500 and no house has tap water, people walk with buckets of water on their heads for two hours every day to get some dirty pound water. Walk with buckets on their heads. Two head hours. Two hours to get some dirty water. And this is women. The women go walk for two hours to get fucking dirty water. It's good for you. Like, Di just, diarrhea. And you hear he said? Nobody in the village has tap water. And nobody. they're sitting on water. They do have this road, which is interesting. I mean, I was shocked by that. Like, this road is it allows the gliders to bring the free stuff. So at least they at least they're giving making it easy on the gliders to bring the free stuff. The gliders, part, the gliders probably built that road too. <laughs> well, yeah, for sure. <laughs> The weird thing is like you you see how African people live and it's like they're living like, those people are normal. The normal thing for an organism on earth to do is to be born, to reproduce and then to die. And these gliders are just like, "Oh no, that's tragic. That's not enough. You need this. You need that." No, 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 no. You need to be born, you need to reproduce and then die. And the Africans are just like that's what we do. And if somebody wants to shower some extra shit on, they're not going to say, no, 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 we're good. They'd be like, okay, I'll take your running water. I'll take you this. I'll take you that. If somebody drags you out of your hut and wants to like, you know, the village people are like chopping you into pieces because somebody said you hexed their goat. That's another option as well. You know, it's just like there are various ways to be born and reproduce and the die. Dash. You're talking about the dash between the, the, the two dates. Yeah, and they're both. Yeah, and the, there's a, the two things are just two very, you know, various things that could occur in the course of a person's existence. But gliders have this a totally different. They've got all this value system, and everybody's got to make sure that everything, but he's okay, and everybody's getting along. And so it's just it's a different reproductive strategy that requires a different mentality. And these and the gliders to see in Africa, they think they're the same organism, so they project their sense of tragedy and well, despair. Hold on. They can reproduce. Like if that guy fucks one of these women, this bitch is gonna have a baby. 
So why would he not think that they're the same organism from that standpoint? Yeah, exactly. There's all kinds of reasons why you would think you're the same organism. But if you, I mean, you know, it only takes a bit of objective observation to see some fundamental differences, regardless of the fact that you, you can have offspring. Population is 2,500 and no house has tap water. People walk with buckets of water on their heads for two hours every day to get some dirty pound water. They welcomed us with a special ceremony. We will not just drill a well, but also in the other half of the video, I'll try perhaps an impossible thing in order to better understand what the woman goes through every day here. I'll try to carry a bucket of water from the pump, which is seven kilometers away from the village. We will see if I can carry the bucket without spilling it over the bumpy paths. He's going to try to do what those women do every day. He's not going to be able to do that. Thing. Not even for it's 10 minutes. Low fucking way listen not man, even for 10 minutes i went to minutes. nigeria in fucking um 1993 and my father he's a businessman and he lives in lagos in the urban area and they still had to fucking go to the well and his wife they had a little slave girl they didn't have well, his wife didn't do it they had a little slave girl from the village who came to live with them it was like their maid and um she she was about as big as um she was probably like about as big as fucking um, uh, a minute. She was she was a, just a little like maybe 10, 11 year old girl. And she carried this big ass like thing on her fucking head. Like that big blue barrel I be telling you about on her fucking head. And, and, and went down to get the well. It wasn't that far away as this. It was probably like maybe like a few city blocks away. But she fucking did that. And every day the fucking TV, the fucking electricity would go out. You'd just be watching TV and the fucking zoom and everything would just go out and you wouldn't have electricity for three or four days and then it would just come on at some random time and you'd have fucking electricity again for some un fucking determined amount of time then it would go off again um yeah man and this is in legos the village we will see if i can carry the bucket without so spilling this, what i'm basically saying is if you can if you don't live like that man you can't just come in day one and do what they do. There's no way in the hell this guy's going to be able to carry this fucking water. You got to live this shit for a while to be able to do that shit, man. Filling it over the bumpy paths. In some cases, they put the bucket on the ground when it rains and try to drink the rainwater. Hello, guys. Do you guys speak English? Girls are too shy, as you can see. Oh, man. So you see, they've already been touched by Islam. So they've been these these are not even them in their natural state. Because they're all wearing clothes, Western clothes, and the girls are dressed as Islam. So they've been this isn't even what you would have seen in night in 1523 or 1623. Hold on, go back to what he said. He said they stop and they drink the rainwater. Yeah, they put buckets out. You can't definitely rain water. That's probably the freshest water they get ever. Over the bumpy paths. In some cases, they put the bucket on the ground when it rains and try to drink the rain water. Hello, guys. Do you guys speak English? Girls are too shy, as you can see. Oh, man. <laughs> The village's female leader drew the first water of the region's first well after months of feasibility study. Then when I took the lead, the kids' water water chants made our hearts swell. <laughs> Cute and curious. I never thought the kids would be that happy. Drinking water seems so insignificant to us, but it matters to them. People had such an abundance of water for the first time and they went wild with joy. <laughs> Especially the children bathed one by one on the running water. <laughs> And they perform their local dances for us. When we flew our drone for filming, 
we were met with great interest from the villagers who saw a drone for the first time in their lives. It is just a drone. Everyone was shocked and tried to figure out what this flying thing was. Now I took my bucket and I will walk 7 kilometers to the old water source to experience firsthand what these people are suffering and walk back 7 kilometers with water. Can I do what women do here every day? How tired do I be? The long painful journey had begun and the curious crowd followed me wondering if I could make it or not. As you can see, women don't have shoes, they walk barefoot. As if it was not enough for me to leave the village to reach the water pound, I've crossed the next other two villages. I've seen long cocoon trees, bushes, short hills, and valleys. Even though going to the village... Now think about what happens if you beef it with the next village. And you gotta walk, and your, your route to getting f fresh water is through their village. Oh man, you fucked, man. Shout out to um Judah man two five two three says ten dollar challenge, I always bringing it, but yeah that that that's something that people don't think about. You know these Africans, you know that these are, these are Africans, and you know they're constantly feuding with each other. So it's like damn, you gotta walk through two other villages to get to the water. The fuck happens when there's beef? An empty bucket is the simple part. I walk for an hour and I am already tired. So what will the return be like? As you can see, it is very deep. They used to hang a rope down, then pull the water. Not easy. You see that the owner of this house cleverly made a system on the roof which transfers the rainwater into the well. Let's fill our bucket now, Dan. <laughs> you walk an hour to get to here. And it's right out somebody's house. You don't know what that person did to this water. You don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just some whole outside. Yeah, <laughs> real shit. Real shit. Hey, you know what I noticed, too? All, what I, I noticed, like, through all of this, I didn't see no African men, like, standing there asking questions or trying right. to, yeah, trying, you know what I mean? Trying to try to figure you out what's going nothing. on. You yeah, or, or, to, in house or, like, or, or at least try to figure it out, like you said. Ask questions, like, Hey, can y'all uh, put it, put us on some? Like, yeah, I'm, I mean, this is this is a production, and I'm sure they, you know, they kind of set it up and got people to do whatever show they wanted to see. All the kids and stuff, you know, and the dude just keeps going on and on about how cute and happy the kids are and stuff, you know. It's like, yeah, but this right here, this is real. Like the fact that his gutter. The water you drink. Yeah, that's the that's the high off his roof. Hey, that's the high tech mecca. And he doesn't have a guttural system all the way around to catch all the water. The that's gutter the mecca is of, only... of uh water. No, yeah, just the like gutter's it. right here. Bare minimum, just enough. You know? So it only catches a only catches a fraction of the possible water that would fall on this house, let alone in the whole village just a fraction of the water whatever falls here comes down here falls over here and it goes into the thing the system on the roof which transfers the rainwater into the well let's fill our bucket now then try to return with the full one can you take off your hands no no hands no hands like this can you walk it is a strange situation as far as i understand there are cases where women return to the village like this <laughs> <laughs> Impossible. <laughs> Look, she took it just right away. Despite being crooked, she can keep her balance. She's trying to help. Let's go. It has already started pouring. The woman tried to take the bucket from me every time. No, 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 no. They thought I would give up early. 
They're looking at me all the time. They're wondering if I will give up or not. When I listen to the sound of nature while carrying the bucket, it is almost hypnotizing. A very calming atmosphere. I almost don't feel the pain in my neck. When I try to hold the bucket steady, my arms also hurt. The interesting is that after an hour when it gets dark, the flies that spread the malaria will appear only half an hour to the dark. I gotta be quick. If I get bitten by the flies that spread the malaria virus, at first I would experience shaking, vomiting, muscle pain, and if I don't get any treatment, I could even face a painful death. See that? How it had grown crooked. I'm half And then on top of all the misery, you have fucking flies, malaria flies. Just a miserable existence out there, man. There, I'm all wet. You can see that very little of water has been lost. My hair is muddy. I think I can handle it, but this wouldn't be something that I want to go through every day. People talk about how hard life is. People who complain about working or studying. All of their complaints don't have a meaning here. The bucket I carry on my head is only 5 liters. And imagine a family of 7. After walking this tiring path for 2 hours every day, they have to quench their thirst, cook, shower and wash their clothes with the 5 liters of water they get. Also this water source wasn't clean at all. And sometimes this water source dries up completely. In those cases, people suffer from thirst and dysentery. Babies were dying of thirst and contaminated water here. The amount of water a person should drink daily is 2 liters on average. And the daily water consumption of an average US citizen is around 150 liters. That's including the water used for taking shower, brushing teeth, or water spent for producing the stuff they eat daily. Incredibly difficult. My head, pants got wet. My neck, hands, and arms hurt. I can feel my skull hurting too. Hey ma'am! Wait, wait, just stop! And finally, the 7 kilometer journey to understand the daily routine of an African woman was about to finish. Everyone is surprised because for the first time their problems are experienced by others. Everyone went crazy, they are so happy. We emphasize with them and share their problems. I wanted to know if I can keep the bucket on my head in balance after carrying it all day long. No one will die of thirst in this village anymore. Then they served some coconut for us to eat. My neck was still hurting, but I was having a very good time. Children never leave me alone. I wanted to walk in the village and they were following me everywhere. <laughs> Those kids would be cars, be jacking cars in the States. With the same smile. Same grin, same laugh. <laughs> yeah, man. What do you think? What do you think about the, 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 this water situation over here in Africa in 2023? And they're saying that they invented a lot of things. They, uh, they're the trailblazers of everything, but they don't have water sources from these remote areas, so it doesn't make sense. Yeah, it has to come from someone with higher intelligence yeah I, I just think that like if you're if you're smart if if you if, if if your people are smart if they had built the pyramids this little shit right here this is a small time thing compared to the pyramids like this is like nothing just building like making a making water finding fresh water because wouldn't you need of a huge fresh water source to feed the army of workers that were digging those fucking stones out of those quarries and moving them hundreds of uh, miles to the um, final 
stop and they're stacking them on top of each other, that workforce would need a huge body of water. Yes. Body of, 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 of water to water source. To, mm. Water source. To no, they just use water. they just use vibranium for that, man. Okay. <laughs> and man, those pyramids, right? They stack these uh, large stones on top of each other, and it's not falling, right? It's uh, it's so tough, it's so built uh, perfectly. Yeah, it's just it's just weird that they did that big thing, and. These little things are like kicking the shit out of. Them. I mean, fucking... it only means one thing. They didn't. They didn't do it. Is the, the Egyptians? <laughs> it's the Egyptians who did that. Or that yeah, whoever it. the Egyptians were too. Whoever they were at that time. But, um, mm-hmm. Yeah, because I mean, like uh, the the goddamn Argentinians are fucking not the same Argentinians that were there five hundred years ago. You know what I'm saying? The goddamn fucking. Um, the Argentinians actually look like the uh, the characters from Apocalypto. So most likely the, the people from South America uh, basically look like that. Yeah, but um, pe- people people um, evolve. Like those pyramids were built thousands and thousands of years ago. Who knows who was there at that point when they were built, man. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's just bizarre that these little things, I mean, these things aren't just kicking their asses. These things, because if it would kick their ass, they would have struggled, but they would have got it. This thing, like, someone else had to come and do it. So it didn't even kick their ass. It's not like that math problem where you fucking sitting there and it might take you fucking 20 minutes and you finally get it and then you now you can move on to the next one. Like, this is like someone had to come and give you the answer. Yeah, after like <laughs> fucking five hundred fucking thousand years and shit, yeah. no one figured out during that time. Yeah, they um, don't need to. Why would they need? They don't need to figure that out. They just need to have enough people to reproduce to spread the genes around. This is the thing about race as well, and the, the idea of diversity. You find that a lot of the ways that these uh, issues are couched in the West artificially are the in inverse of reality so people talk like if you have a magazine cover with like a soccer team and everybody's a sun person they would call that a diverse team if everybody's a glider they would call it insufficiently diverse but like look at these kids look at the people in this village the hordes and hordes of people and this dude is like it's really important that we make sure that there are as many of them as possible like why like how many there's not that much variation on the theme and there's reasons for that with, you know, regional, regionally isolated evolution. Like Europe is a different scene. There's like a lot of different groups that are fighting it out and exchanging genes and stuff like that. In these Bantu enclaves, it's like there's only so many variations on the theme genetically. And that goes along with that kind of reproductive strategy. It's just like the ones that manage to survive are the ones that are going to pass on their shit. And that's all you need. You don't need to just maximize the numbers just for the sake of it mm. you know what i mean yeah man, you're making more people who can't figure out how to dig a hole and find water exactly and they're just versions of the next guy 